I'm Larry Menzi. Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we're coming to you from the state capitol. It is primary week in New Jersey, and Jersey voters put Hillary Clinton over the top. She secured the Democratic nomination, or did she? And you are not going to believe what they found when they did a cleanup of New Jersey beaches. Those stories and a whole lot more because Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to Jersey Matters. We come to you this week from the state capitol. We are in one of the committee rooms right now, actually the biggest of the committee rooms. And with us is Michael Simons, who is a reporter for New Jersey 101.5 and for Town Square Media. And we're taping this right after, the day after the New Jersey primary, when Hillary Clinton allegedly, and I'm going to use the word allegedly because there is... Uh, uh, some controversy over it when Hillary Clinton allegedly has secured the nomination in New Jersey put her over the top. I say allegedly because Bernie Sanders is saying whoa 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 she doesn't have it yet. So is the media right or is Bernie Sanders right? Both. The, uh, so there are two kinds of delegates on the Democratic side. There are pledged delegates who are locked into a certain candidate, and then there are super delegates who are party leaders, party officials, elected office holders, and they also get a vote. Their vote isn't tied to how a state votes, so they can change their mind. So that's the point that Senator Sanders makes, is that if you count those folks while, de while deciding that she has the delegates that she needs, those are, they aren't locked in. They could change their mind. Although the math, the way that he uses it, she would have to get 59% of the pledged delegates in order to secure the nomination without the superdelegates, and they're generally in her corner anyway. Right. No, it seems like she does have the nomination, but as you said, he, he has a pretty good point. Right down 95 in Philadelphia, we're going to have the Democratic Convention. Bernie Sanders, everybody thought he might concede after last night. He didn't. He said he's taking this to the convention. Now, I know there's this meeting with the president to come, so something may happen before this airs. But assuming it doesn't, I don't think it's going to because he did sound like he's staying in the race. Do you see a problem at the convention? Well, I mean, I think that he says those things in order to try to have the most power going into the convention, the power to influence what goes into the party's official platform, to make sure that perhaps he gets a prominent speaking opportunity at the convention to spread his message some more. So there's no downside immediately for him. I'm to not do talking that. about him, though. I'm oh. talking about his supporters, ardent, zealot supporters who feel like they're disenfranchised and are mad about the process. Could they cause a problem? Well, I think that's part of why they have to treat him well, because if they dismiss him and say, we've defeated you, please leave now, then yes, they could, they could certainly cause a problem and, and not come around to to supporting her in the end, presuming she is the nominee. So that's why they need to treat him well so that they don't cause a problem. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about Chris Christie because Donald Trump had a controversy this past week when he came out against a judge in a lawsuit against Trump University and said it was because of his Mexican descent that he couldn't get a fair trial. And many Republicans, not just Democrats, many Republicans, some even disavowed their endorsement of him. Chris Christie didn't. Chris Christie was all in and even blasted those Republicans. What is he doing? He's, first off, he should get used to that because that's going to be a lot of what Chris Christie deals with for the next five months. Presuming that Donald Trump continues to say the sorts of controversial things he does, anybody who's for him is going to be pressed by Democrats and by the media, and some would say that those two are the same. To, to basically answer for the things that Trump has said. But he endorsed him. He's all in at this point. He's helping plan his transition into office. So if somebody that close to the inner circle had criticized, disavowed the way that Newt Gingrich or Lindsey Graham did, then that would have been a particularly huge story. Yeah, but he came, he came out and said they should, you know, Lindsey Graham should go back to South Carolina. And when I say what he's doing, it's not that I disagree with him. I, was, I wasn't taking a position on whether he was wrong or right. It's just that he's been so vociferous. Is he the hitman now for the campaign? Is he the one that they send out to go after people, much like he did to Marco Rubio during the debate? And that becomes one of the questions. If he does that and if he's good at that, does Trump look at him and say, well, maybe he should be my vice president because that's what I need in those debates. Maybe, maybe all of this is a tryout, basically, for who he's going to choose as a running mate. 
That's fascinating. And also you have uh, Cory Booker as a possible running mate for Hillary Clinton. Right. And one of the complications in that is that if she were to win and he were to be elected vice president, then his replacement in the U.S. Senate would be selected by Chris Christie. Oh, and so it would, so it would be, you would. Yeah, I mean, there, there would be Democrats who would be pushing against her not to choose him because they could conceivably achieve a Senate majority and then give it back right away by having to give that seat to a Republican governor who would presumably appoint a Republican as he did when Senator Lautenberg passed. And as bizarre as this election year has been, that's probably exactly what's going to happen. Let's talk about Christy Todd Whitman really quickly because she is now come out of the shadows and is in the forefront, has made national news because she said she's a never Trumper. She said, no, 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 you can't vote for him and even attacked Chris Christie for his defense. Yeah, she was for John Kasich, and even after Kasich had dropped out of the race, was still encouraging people to vote for him in the primary anyway, to send a message about Trump. So, yeah, I think she, I think she has said that she can't support Hillary Clinton and that she'll be looking around for, you know, a, a third-party candidate, presumably, or, or a write-in candidate. And, you know, she, she isn't the only one, but certainly in, in New Jersey, she's one of the more prominent. There are some lawmakers in the state Senate and Assembly who have said the same, that they can't support their party's nominee. Any interesting Jersey election uh, campaigns coming up for 2016? Um, one of the congressional races is supposed to be interested in, in North Jersey, where Scott Garrett has been the congressman for a while. He's very conservative, and the Democrats are always trying to take a run at, at winning that seat. They have a well-funded uh, candidate of their own, Josh Gothheimer, who used to be a speechwriter, I think, in Bill Clinton's White House. And so they have some hopes, and I, I think you'll see particularly hoping that Donald Trump causes a backlash that helps Democrats, even particularly this could be the cycle that they finally win. Oh, nice. That means a lot of money will be coming in on ads. Hopefully we'll get some of it. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Michael Simons, who is a veteran political reporter, now working for New Jersey 101.5 and Town Square Media. We'll be back in just a minute.